What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin and in today's video I will be building some kitchen cabinets. In the last video I made I uh, refurbished this uh, panel saw in front of me here and I said that I'm going to be building some kitchens with it. Well that moment is here so uh, I cannot hide anymore. I have to get these kitchens done. Uh, the materials I'm going to be building this kitchen out of is uh, half inch uh, pre-finished birch ply and for the back panels I'm going to be using some quarter inch pre-finished birch ply and for the shaker doors, face frames and all that I'm going to be using maple and quarter inch maple ply. I'm going to start the build with a 36 uh, sink base cabinet and I just made a sketch here on this uh, piece of paper so you guys kind of see the rough dimensions of the panels I have to cut. This is a sketch of the side panels and all the side panels are the same. Same height, same width, same dados on the back on the side they are just mirror for each side of the cabinet so um, the standard height for your base cabinet it's 34 and a half inches tall and the standard depth of the cabinet is 24 inches including the face frame the face frame in my case is three quarter of an inch so if you take that out of the 24 inches you end up with 23 and a quarter inches for the width of the panel also, the toe kick that I'll be cutting is going to be a setback at 3 inches and then it's going to have a height of 4 inches. I'm going to be cu uh, cutting a dado at 5.5 inches from the bottom and this dado is going to be half an inch wide to accommodate the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, and also we'll have another dado in the back of the panels and that's going to be a quarter inch dado. For the back panels. Uh, this quarter inch dado is going to be set back at three quarter of an inch from the edge of the panel. This way I can mount a half an inch uh, nailer strip behind this uh, quarter inch back panel and I will be ending up flush with the edge of the panel. So uh, let me break down uh, this 4x8 sheet into a smaller sections and then I'm going to start cutting. Okay so what I did here I did a uh, rough cut at 35 inches out of the 4 by 8 sheet and uh, now I'm going to be cutting the sheet in half at 24 inches uh, I'm going to be cutting at 24 not at 23 and a quarter the first time uh, I want to kind of do a fine tune up of the blade uh, I want to find out the perfect height that is not going to damage my uh, uh, birch veneer here on top and the same on the bottom and once I have that tuned up then I'm going to make the final cuts at the perfect dimensions that I have to do mat. Also I'm cutting this uh, plywood this way because I want the inside of the cabinet uh, grain to be vertical on the side panels. So I got both uh, side panels cut to size, now I'm going to mark my toe kicks and cut those up. So I marked 3 inch inside, about 4 inch on the height. So we have the first uh, toe kick uh, cut out marked on the first panel. On the second panel that's here on top, we're going to be cutting it on the opposite corner. To keep track of uh, all the panels, which one is left, which one is right, and trying not to make any mistakes, I use some painter's tape on these panels and then I write on the tape which panel is which. So 
So I've cut this with the table saw as close as I could and now I'm just going to use the jigsaw and finish it up. Since none of the plywoods are half an inch these days anymore, uh, I took a scrap piece of uh, the finished uh, birch and I cut a slot in it at half an inch with a dado stack just to test fit this uh, scrap piece over here. And you can see that how much play you got. So then I set it up at 15 30 seconds and the fit is much better. It's barely any play in it. I took my other table saw and I uh, put a dado stack in it. I cannot use a dado stack in my uh, sliding table saw so i set up the height of the cut at 3 16 that's how much i'm going to cut into the panels and also i set the data stack at uh, 15 30 seconds since the plywood is not exactly half an inch i used a scrap piece of plywood and i run it through the data stack just to make sure that my setup is correctly and i'm cutting at five and a half inch if you do not have a data stack, not a problem. You can just use a regular blade and just have to run the plywood multiple times until you cut to the width that you need. I've got both of the 15 30 seconds dados cut. Now I'm going to set up the table saw for the quarter inch dado that's going to be on the back of the cabinet for the back panel. After my checking my dado stack, I realized that quarter inch is the smallest that it can cut. So I measure my back panel and it's 3 16 actually, real size. So I'm going to be using the saw then. Uh, which has an eighth of an inch blade and I'm going to cut once and then move it a sixteenth over and make another pass. Both sides are cut. Uh, now I'm going to cut the bottom panel. Now before you cut the bottom panel, you're going to have to do a little bit of math to find out the exact width of the panel, the depth of the panel, or the, yeah, it's kind of, it's the same as the, the depth of the side, which is 23 and a quarter. Uh, the way I like to do this is when I build my face frames, I like to leave a quarter inch overhang from the face frame to the side of the cabinet. This way, if you need to add a panel of a different color on the side here, which is usually about 3 16 you're not going to stick out over the face frame over here. Also, it's easier to use a planer on this side if you need to shim the cabinet and adjust the level. So you have to take in con into consideration this quarter inch over here. Then you're going to have the same quarter inch on the other side of the cabinet. Like that, sticking out. So you have a total of a half inch, then you have the two sides together, which are an inch, almost an inch, they are 15, 16 together, but let's say an inch for now, it's easier to do the math that way. So my total width of the cabinet is 36 inches, minus an inch, that'll be 35, and minus half inch, quarter inch, quarter inch here, it'll be 34 and a half. Uh, the depth of my dados are 3 16 on each side. If you add those together, you end up with 3 8 Now you have 34 and a half. You add the 3 8 to it, you're going to end up at 34 and 7 8 And then you can add the 16th over here that these two together are smaller than an inch. So you're going to end up with a 34 and 15 16 as width and 23 and a quarter as depth. So now let's cut that bottom panel. So this is my uh, bottom panel cut to size. Again, it's 34 
and 15 16 wide by 23 and a quarter deep and I also cut uh, the same 3 16 dado by 3 16 deep uh, for the back panel before I put the side panels and the bottom together uh, there's one more thing I'm gonna do and that's drilling some pocket holes onto the outside uh, of the side panels and that will be for attaching the face frames to the cabinet box to put the cabinet together I'm gonna be using some glue then uh, some uh, pin nails to hold it together and then I'm gonna use some of these uh, trim head screws to tighten it up these are the GRK 8 by inch and a quarter screws before I start putting this thing uh, together another thing I like to do is to transfer the center of this uh, dado cuts in here onto the other side and then line them up from uh, one end to the other so this way when you put your nails and your screws uh, they'll be nice and centered okay enough said let's put this thing together I'm gonna be using some tight bond too for the glue. Also to help keep uh, things together, I'm using this uh, Rockler corner clamps over here. Okay, next I'll be driving some pin nails in it. Before putting the finished screws, I'm going to pre-drill the holes. Okay, let's measure this uh, back panel now. What do we have here? We have 34 and 5 eighths. And then we're gonna have to add 3 eighths to that. So we're going to have 35. And as far as height, we're going to be at 29 and 3 sixteenths. Okay, let's see how this thing fits. <laughs> Thank you. 
what I will do next is uh, I'm going to cut some uh, three inch nailing strips and I'm going to install those one over here on the bottom of the cabinet and one on the top and those are going to be the strips that you're going to drive your screws through from the inside when you mount the cabinet to the wall so let's measure this uh, gap over here and uh, find out what do we need 34 and 5 eighths so I'm gonna cut two 34 and 5 eighths by 3 inches uh, nailing strips and Normally on a base cabinet, uh, I put uh, one of these uh, <clears throat> supporting strips on top here too. But because this is a sink base, uh, you're going to run into your sink once you mount it. So I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to leave it like this with only one brace in the back. And I'm just going to cut some uh, reinforcing corners here out of some uh, 3 quarter inch plywood. Uh, probably about 3 inches by 3 inches. And install those in each corner and we're going to have the same up front. The carcass of the cabinet is done. Uh, this is how it looks right now. You can see the pocket holes on the side there for attaching the face frame. Going around the back, you got your nailing strips, bottom and top. You got your uh, reinforced corners here on each side. And this is the other side. And this is how the interior of the cabinet looks like. Nothing fancy there. So now I'm going to be milling some maple and build a face frame for it. I made a rough sketch of the face frame just so you guys can see how uh, I'm gonna, going to assemble it. So you're going to have uh, three rails and two styles. The styles are the vertical ones and the rails are the horizontal ones. We're going to have an overall outside dimension of 36. We're going to have a uh, 30 and a half height. And uh, I'm going to have a 5 inch opening height for the drawer. In this case, we're not going to have a drawer, it's just going to be like a fixed uh, face plate. So I got all my pieces uh, milled right here. These are milled to three quarter inch by inch and a half. Now I'm gonna cut it up to length, each one of them. And then I'm gonna start uh, putting them together. To put them together, I'm gonna use uh, pocket holes. Before you start making the pocket holes, you gotta make sure that you adjust your jig from half an inch where it was before when we did the cabinet sides. And then you have to adjust your drill bit accordingly too for three quarter inch cut so now let's uh get this uh, face frame uh, drilled out Before I uh, mount the face frame, I cut this uh, brace piece 
and this is the same width as the back of the cabinet the inside back of the cabinet there and I'm gonna put it here and clump it so this uh, this way it will keep my cabinet square when I mount the face frame I'm using uh, four parallel clamps to hold this face frame to the carcass of the cabinet and uh, I was able to position everything the way I want it so I got my quarter inch overhang over here on this side then I got the same over here on the back quarter inch same over on this side and of course same over here so now I'm gonna throw some uh, <clears throat> some pocket screws in it Next I'm going to be mounting this uh, toe kick back plate. This will act as a support for the bottom of the cabinet also. Uh, I ran out of uh, half inch Baltic birch so I'm just going to use this scrap piece I had here and I'm just going to double it up with another piece to finish all the way down. So I use these uh, two clamps to hold it in place and I'm going to put some uh, finish head screws from the sides, on e two on each side. To cut the styles and uh, rails on the doors I'm going to be using this uh, Freud uh, adjustable rail and style set for the shaker style. And uh, this one requires 7 16 to add to your rails once you subtract your styles from the overall width. So here we have 17 and 3 quarter width of the door. We're going to have to take out 4 inches, 2 and 2 inches the styles. So we're going to end up with 13 and 3 quarter. And then we're going to have to add 7 16 for each side. That means 7 8. And then I'm going to end up with a total of 14 and 5 8. So my rails will be 14 and 5 8. To cut the profile into the styles and rails, I'm using this uh, Freud uh, router bit set. Uh, it comes in as two bits, one and two right there. And what's nice about this, this is an adjustable set. You can adjust the depth of the groove for a different thickness of panels that you have. And that comes really handy. In my case, uh, the panel that I'm using, it's a little smaller than quarter inch. So I was able to adjust it for the perfect gap. I got this uh, router bit set uh, off of Amazon. I'm gonna post the link in the description below. You guys can check it out. This is how the rail looks like after you run it through the router. This is how the tenon looks like. And this is the groove for the panel. I'm gonna check to see how they fit. This is a nice flat surface with cast iron of the table saw. So I'm just gonna... There you go. That's a perfect fit. The size of the interior panel for the shaker door uh, the width of it is going to be the same as your rails. Um, I will cut it a 16 smaller to allow for clearance. And for the height of it, it's going to be the height of the styles. In my case, is 22 and 3 quarter. From which I'm going to take out 4 inches. The width of the two rails. So that will make it 18 and 3 quarter. And then I'm going to have to add the 3 eighths that the uh, panel sinks in in both of these uh, rails so they'll make it uh, 19 and a half and also I'm going to cut it a uh, 16 smaller to allow for a little bit of clearance got my panel cut out uh, I got all the parts ready now let's put this thing together so this will be the front the good part of the panel A bit of a tight fit because uh, the way the router bit was set up was set up for 316 this is just like a hair thicker than 316 so next time I'll just take a 
a hair pass just to make these things a little bit looser so it won't be so much of a pain in the neck to put it together Gotta make sure the bevel and all these uh, rails it's they're all up. And that is that. And my last piece. Okay, that's pretty much you know a rough put together i'm still gonna have to squirt it up before i glue it uh this is just so you guys can see how everything fits together with the panel in place so let me take a closer look at the door this is how the door looks like put together to cover the drawer gap i made this uh drawer face it's just a solid piece of maple I just cut it to six and a half inches wide by 35 and a half inches long and I'm just going to take it to the router and uh, ease it up a little bit with a 45 degree router bit. To mount this uh, fake drawer face to the cabinet I'm using my thruster Carter gauges. I use this on my uh, bandsaw a lot to set the reveal. So I'm using the half inch to set a half inch reveal from the top and the quarter inch for a quarter inch reveal on the side after that i'm just going to drill some holes in the back pre-drill some holes in the back and i'll use the same uh, inch and a quarter finish head screws to mount this uh, face to the cabinet for hinges uh, i had some uh, blooms inch and a quarter offset on hand so i'm going to be using these these are not a soft close version. Um, I ordered some soft close ones, but until those get here, I'm just gonna mount these. And to drill the holes for these concealed hinges, I'm using this uh, Craig concealed hinge uh, jig. I set it up uh, at three mils offset from the outside edge. That's what these hinges require. And also I set it at four inches from the edge of the door, on the bottom edge of the door. So everything is set up, uh, now let's drill some holes. set the, pr the door properly for the correct height I'm using my half inch gauge over there again I want a half inch uh, reveal in between the drawer face and the door so with that in place I'm pushing the door up to butt it against the gauge and I'm pre-drilling some holes to mount this uh... just gonna mark him for now and then I'm going to drill it right after. Well, the cabinet is finally done. Installed both doors, adjusted the hinges so they line up nice here. This is how the cabinet looks like outside. And inside, I'm going to start building the other cabinets and once I'm done with all of them, then I will pull these doors out and start finishing up the face frames and the doors and all that. 
I hope that uh, you guys found this video helpful and it will help you on your journey building your own cabinets. After I'll be done with all the base cabinets, I will make another video about building the 24 inch corner wall cabinet. That's a little tricky, so I'm going to make a video about building that one. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.